Hello there, everyone. I have uh, a good one that I think everyone should enjoy today. I actually took this photograph this morning. It was a frog on a small pond. Uh, it had just popped up in this tiny sliver of sunlight that was shining through. And when I looked over, I knew this photo had something to it. Um, to my eye, it looked very different than this original photo here that the camera took. The camera was on auto white balance, so it actually shifted the white balance pretty cool. So I'm going to fix that first. Um, and there was also, to my eye, there was a lot more contrast there. So as is often the case with a raw file, there, it's a little bit more flat than uh, what the original scene was. So um, I shared this photo today online, and it looked very different than what you're seeing here. So I'm going to try and show you how I got there. Uh, so first things first, in Lightroom here, we're going to hop right over to the crop. And going to make sure I got a nice straight horizon here. So I'm actually going to use the angle tool, drag that straight. Looks like I pretty much got it there. And I am going to crop in a little bit on this one. Maybe something like that. That seems ballpark good for what I like. And as I said, I'm going to warm this up significantly. and bring some of that green into it. I'm going to kick the highlights up. And actually, I don't want to go that bright with this photo to start out with. I'm going to I'm going to kind of keep this a little bit moodier and darker here in Lightroom, and then I'm going to really punch up that frog in Photoshop where I can get a little bit more control over it. Uh, so, graduated adjustment here. I'm going to darken that foreground just a little bit and then do the same to the top there to really kind of enhance that streak of sun there. A um, little bit more contrast, a little bit warmer, a little bit more green. Just trying to kind of bring it to what I remember my eye seeing that day, uh, this morning. Um, it was just covered in duckweed this entire pond, so the whole thing was just a really, really green scene. So um, I think that's a good starting point in Lightroom here. So I'm going to now hop over to Photoshop and start editing there. And this is where this photo is really going to take on a life of its own, hopefully. First things first, got a lot of cleanup I want to do here. Um, so I'm just going to smooth out some of these kind of darker blotches in the background and then really get these dark blotches in the foreground here. Uh, I want this image to just be kind of really clean. And right now I'm just using the cloning tool. As you can see, just getting rid of all the kind of obnoxious dark spots and just trying to do a lot of sampling to make sure it doesn't look like I'm creating any patterns anywhere. Uh, it's looking pretty good there. Let's get rid of this close one first then we'll take care of the big spot after that. And I don't mind a little bit of variation there. Obviously, I don't want it to look so smooth that the whole thing looks kind of fake. So, you know, I'm going to leave some of these kind of some of that kind of variation in there. But all these little sticks and branches that were sticking up out of the water have got to go for me. And I totally get that this would be well beyond the scope of a lot of people's preference in editing. Um, you know, it really depends on the photo sometimes for me, how much, how far I'll go. Uh, in this case, you know, my thought is I'm not really modifying the subject. I'm just kind of getting rid of some of these distracting elements in the foreground and background. So, you know, it's my taste that I have no problem doing that. And uh, I totally respect those that are the don't edit the photo too heavily other than just global adjustments um, kind of people. Uh, I totally respect that. Uh, that's just not me. So almost finished getting rid of all these kind of specks and annoying things. So just bear with me here. And 
And as you can see, I'm often using the, uh, I'm on the Mac here, it's the Option and Shift. Uh, I'm sorry, Control and Shift. Let me try that again. Control and Option, sorry. Um, shortcut to resize the brush so it can fit where I'm working. Sorry, I don't remember the shortcuts anymore. They're just kind of embedded in my head and they just tend to happen. So I actually have to look down to see what the heck I'm hitting most of the time. With my hands nowhere to go. All right, so there's our cleanup. Already looks way better. Now is when I really wanna, I'm gonna punch that green up just a little bit more globally. There we go. And I'm going to darken this image entirely to really make it a little bit more dramatic here okay so um, something like that is where I kinda want my background density but now I really want to bring back this streak of Sun so I'm going to get a brush and then just kind of one that kinda of fits in this opening here I'm just gonna click right across and get rid of that darkening on that streak of sun and it's gonna really make that stand out a lot more and then I'm also gonna really zoom in here and then take it off of the frog and I'm trying to get real precise on this frog here even around all those bumps of duckweed and everything And there we go. I'm going to option click the layer mask so I can see what I'm working with here. I'm going to fill in this whole section with black so that way that whole frog is now. So now you can see I got a great line of sun going there. Everything else is getting darker. Uh, I kind of want a little bit of contrast on the whole thing. There we go. Something like that. I'm just going to lower the opacity on that layer a touch. Um, I want to really have this frog stand out now too so I'm going to actually zoom way back in and I'm also noticing there's kind of a, a dark spot right behind his head there so, or eyeball so I'm just gonna try and soften that up back to that original retouch layer that I was using alright so another curves adjustment layer I'm gonna really lighten and pop the contrast on that frog and then paint that in right on him and then I also really want to warm up that streak of sun to make it look like it's just kind of really glowing right through there. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here to that. And I'm going to load the selection that I used for the darkening, that right there. So I just command click on the layer mask and then I'm going to invert that selection and then I can actually just paint it, oops, go to this new layer, then I can just paint that warmth and you can see as I go across it really just kind of turns that into that nice warm sun. And then the last thing I actually want to do is I'm actually going to cool off the shadow area so I can kind of get the separation of the warm sun and the cool shade, which again is how I kind of remembered it to my eye. So once more I'm going to load this uh, darken selection that I had done and now I'm actually going to add some blue and some cyan to that background to that uh, shadow area and you can see that is now going to actually kind of before after that's going to really draw our eye to that frog um, and that's pretty much it right there guys uh, so total before after pretty significant change there uh, let me save that, go right back to Photoshop here, or I'm sorry, Lightroom, and I will actually reset that image so you can see a total before and after. Before, after. And there you go. Uh, a huge change in under 10 minutes, and uh, you know a really powerful image for me it's one of my favorite frog photos that I've ever taken I've had them in these tiny bits of light and spots of light before but I've never had such a tiny shaft of light shooting through and it was just incredible luck when I saw this frog surface right in that today so 
thanks for watching. i really hope you enjoyed and i'll have more of these to come in the near future.